Hey, this is Toby. Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while since I uploaded the last one. In this video, we will convert the time range breakout EA. We code it on this channel. I will link the first parts up here into an EA using pending orders. So you can see here, we get a range for each day and we get the breakout with a pending order and not a market order. A lot of you guys requested that. So that's what we do in this video. In the end of the video, we will also do some back testing with tick data. Um, so you see all the settings of the strategy. And before we start now with coding this EA, I also want to say thank you for 10K subs on this channel. Uh, for this, I will put a discount code for my programming courses, um, alpha and beta into the description. So you get 15% off for the next two weeks. If you're interested in learning MQL5 on your own, um, this is really the best option, I think, for you to get started with the alpha course and more advanced programming with the beta programming course. So a lot of you guys probably already know this EA. This is the time range breakout EA we coded here on the channel. We have a start and the end time for the range. Inside this time window, we take the high and the low of the range. And after the range end, we wait for a breakout to the upper or lower side. Here we can see a short trade, again a short trade. Here's a buy trade and we close all the trades um, in the evening. Okay, for this video, I will use Visual Studio Code. Um, you can also use the default meta editor. If you want to use Visual Studio Code for MQL5, I also made a video about yeah, how to set it up. I will also link it up here. Okay, so I opened here the time range EA dynamic lot size trading stop loss file. This is the last, um, video of the time range EA series. So open this file and we will change this EA now to work with pending orders. Okay, so first of all, I want to save this file with a new name. So file and save as, and let's name this, yeah, maybe just time range EA and pending for pending order. I will save it into my YouTube folder here Okay, and let's also compile here to make sure we have no mistake so we can start coding. Okay, so the first thing we want to change here is or update is the copyright year. Doesn't really matter for the code, but yeah. And here in the include section, the MQL5 extension wants a forward slash here for this include path. So let's do this. Let's change this to a forward slash so we get rid of this warning. Um, for the inputs, they will stay the same, most of them. Um, we will delete a few options here later. But for now, let's take a look at the on tick function um, to change the market orders into pending orders. So here in the on tick function, we have our create breakout function call where we check for a breakout with each tick. But now we want to um, run this once the range is done and create our pending orders. So let's change this here to create pending orders and also the comment here. Create pending orders like this and let's take a look at the function. Calculate range um here check breakout create pending orders also here the comment and yeah here first of all we check if we are after the range so we do this with this if statement here and with the next one here we check if we have a breakout but now we want to change this because we want to create the pending orders, of course, immediately um, after the range end here. And we don't wait for a breakout. We set the pending order here at the high and the low of the range immediately when we cross here the range end time. So we can delete this condition here where we check if the ask was above the high Delete this, we will also change the comment here. Create uh, pending 
order for high breakout. And we can also delete this statement here where we check the breakout mode like this. Now we need to change a few things here where we calculate the stop loss and take profit. Um, yeah, here we take the last tick bit price and subtract the stop loss. And we want to change this now to the range high. So range dot high. And also here for the take profit range dot high and we add our stop loss in percent of the range to this value now here where we calculate the lots we also need to change this here and use the range dot high here like this this is our stop loss distance range high minus the actual stop loss value and we get back the lot size that we use for the pending order Okay, now here we want to create the pending order and start instead of open a market order here. So let's change the comment. Um, open by position to yeah, create pending order or create buy stop. Um, because if we take a look at this picture here, if the higher price here is our range high, we want to create a buy stop at the higher price. Um, so when the price crosses this level here, we take a buy position and we hope that the price continues to rise here. So we create a buy stop here. So we change this position open to buy stop. And let's delete all the parameters here. Let's take a look. So we need to specify the volume. This is our lots variable. We need to specify the price. So the price is now our range dot high. Next parameter is the symbol. So we can just use the current symbol with underscore symbol here. Then we need to set the stop loss. We calculated the stop loss with our variable stop loss and also take profit. And now we can set a time until the or where the order is deleted again. So we want to set a specific time where the order is deleted, which is our close time um, of the range, right? We create the order here at the end of the range and we want to delete the order here at the red line. For example, when there was no breakout um, to the upper side, we want to delete um, the order. So we set a specific time here with order, I think it's time um, specified here. And with the next parameter, we can then specify the time and the time is at our range dot close time. And the last parameter here, we can set a comment for this order. So let's just type time range. EA pending the name of our EA. Uh, you can write everything you want in here and this will appear in the terminal of your MetaTrader 5 platform. Okay, um, let's also add a semicolon here. Like this, yeah, perfect. So that's it. We should create a buy stop. Let's Hit compile here, make sure that you don't have any mistakes. And now we do the same basically for the low breakout or the, the sell stop order. So let's change this comment here, check. Uh, what did we write here? Let's just copy this. So create pending order for low breakout. Uh, we check the flag, we don't check the price here. We delete this condition. We set the flag and we delete this breakout mode. We calculate stop loss and take profit. Here we change the last tick ask to our range dot low. And also here last tick ask range dot low for the take profit calculation. Um, yeah, and here for the calculate lots function, 
we now subtract the stop loss and here we paste range.low. This is our stop loss distance and we get the lots uh, for the cell um, stop. So we also change the comment here, create, create cell stop and here this to cell stop. I will just copy the parameters here from the buy stop order, paste it here and let's change this range high to low, the current symbol, stop loss take profit, close time, yeah everything else is the same. So now we have our sell stop at the lower end of the range and our buy stop at the upper level. Okay, so let's hit compile again. I will also compile here using the script. In the Visual Studio Editor, you can press Ctrl, Shift and C. So this will open up the meta editor and will compile the file there. So it's also updated in the meta 25 platform. Yeah, let's maybe run a quick visual test to see if this already works here. Um, we call this function here in the onTick. So this should be fine. So let's do a quick visual test here in the meta 5 tester. Um, I will yeah, select the EA of course. I will use for this test my custom symbol and uh, later in the video we will use tick data. But for this test um, it's a lot faster if you use just every tick here with my custom symbol. You can also use just the default broker symbol. Just check the visual mode here, five minute time frame. Um, yeah, and I will use the default inputs. So the stop loss is 150% of the range. So let's see, and 200% for the take profit. Let's make the take profit 500% so we don't get confused. So it's out of the way. And let's just start this test. Let's see if we create pending orders already. So we can see the range start and end. Um, and as soon as we hit the range end, we create two pending orders here at the high and the low of the range. Sell stop, buy stop, stop loss is 120% of the range. So a little bit above the range and below the range. And we can see the stop loss, it's like five times the range. So 500%. Okay, um, this looks nice. Of course, the, the objects, they disappear. And we will also change this later in the video. So we get a range for each day, but it looks nice. Let's see. Yeah, we close the trades. The orders are deleted at the end of the day. But what happened here? So to avoid to calculate a new range when we have a breakout to the upper and lower side, we go here into the on tick function and we delete this condition here where we calculate a new range when the high breakout and the low breakout flag is true. So let's just delete this. And we can also delete the check here if the range close is greater or equal to zero. Like this. Um, yeah, let's compile again. And now we should always close the or delete the pending orders in the evening and only calculate a new range when we cross the close time. So we should not see any trades that are open overnight. Um, yeah, looks fine even if we get two breakouts like this. Okay, so let's go all the way to the top of the code file. Um, I want to delete a few inputs that we don't need anymore for this EA. We have still the magic number, the lot mode, um, stop loss, take profit. Now here for the range close, we delete here in the comment this minus one equals off. We don't have this option anymore. And we also want to delete the breakout mode enum and the input here for the breakout mode. So let's delete this. 
we can keep the day of week filter and for the global variables of course we still need the range structure um, now here i don't i think we don't use the previous tick let's see we set it here but we don't use it so yeah we can delete the previous tick here in the global variable section uh, we only need the last tick for this ea and we still have the trade object of course now for the one in it yeah we still check the inputs um, we set the magic number to the trade object we calculate the range if we have no position open yeah and we draw the objects now later we will also change a few things here in the draw object function so we have multiple yeah so we don't delete the objects from the previous day when we create a new range um, that's more convenient if you take a look at the previous days you can see the range um, with all the objects um, on day init is fine on tick yeah we don't need this line here anymore previous tick equals last tick we can delete this we just get the current tick in our last tick variable here and we calculate or update the range high and low here um, close positions that's fine calculate new range if yeah we hit the close time there was no range calculated yet or there was a range but no tick inside for example if we have a gap in market data for example we need this option here to calculate a new range uh, we create the pending orders we update the stop loss that's fine okay now here the check input function i think everything is still the same um, also calculate range um, count open positions create pending orders yeah this is really the only part that we have to change to create the buy stop and sell stop here calculate lots is the same check lots um, update stop loss close positions of course you could update this to use the c position info class um, of the mql5 library but it's also fine like this um, draw objects yeah here we have to update a few things so we don't delete the previous range objects on the chart um, but I think we will do this in the next part because I don't want to make this video too long I want to upload this okay so we'll do the object stuff in the next part we will also do some back testing I promise you we will get a better equity graph than this one in the next video and I will show you of course all the settings so you can use this EA on your own and again if you want to learn mql5 remember 15 percent off with the code below the video for the next two weeks i just want to say thank you for the people yeah that watch my content um, i think the alpha and the beta programming course is already great value and now with 50 percent if you want to learn mql5 yeah you can check it out okay so i wish you a great week uh, good trades and i will see you in the next video bye bye